I uh, just want to welcome you. Welcome to this special session. I don't, I don't, I don't even know I have to call it. It just, I think we're trying to catch up with what we started uh, on the topic of dreams and uh, God's language and everything. So I've noticed that my time it's a bit um, complicated right now, and I thought maybe we could have this type of session and share share this station with all of you guys following us, all the ECT members and anybody who actually knows about what we, we're doing for the Lord in ECT, uh, YouTube, and all the social media. What I'm trying to do here is just give the session so we can continue the subject on dreams and dreams interpretation and uh, everything concerning God's language that we started already every Wednesday. So I know I'm not probably going to be there physically present in every meetings. So I thought, why not just keep continuing the subject by publishing and I'm, I'm in uh, doing this type of videos uh, so that everybody can just uh, get into and then you know follow what we're doing and then more, maybe ask questions and then we keep this interaction going. So for for that sake, I have a little representation of all of you there. <laughs> just some members over here. The they've got this chance of being here. How do they do that? I don't know. How uh, do you sign up to be here? I don't know. I only knew that I'm gonna have people in front of me, and then we're gonna share. And this is gonna be really fun as we um, as we really sharing the word of God. Let me pray before we start. Father God, we thank you. I have this feeling. Just exactly as Jesus used to say, it, the word I'm sharing with you, the word I'm teaching you are spirit and life. God, I know everything we're going to be sharing right now, it's spirit and life. Talking about God's language, talking about dreams, talking about all these mysteries. It has to be in the spirit and it has to bring life. Otherwise, it's just going to be a good talk and the spirituality has become something that everybody is keen on. I don't want to just to bring something that is already out there and everybody like. Let it be spirit and life. Open up our heart so we can receive this according to your spirit. Spirit of the living God, speak to our heart. Spirit of the living God, speak to everybody who's going to follow this video. Spirit of the living God, speak now. Speak for every time this video will be played. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay. Well, concerning the subject of God's language, we've started a lot of, I mean, we, we've covered some part of it. Uh, I give some principle. I always love to teach using principles because uh, they lay foundations and they help you continue the subject without the teacher. So now you know what are the foundation. You can build your own house. At least you know this is the shape of the house, how it's supposed to be. So I've been laying some foundations since we started from the first uh, Wednesday about God language. I've said a lot of things, so uh, I don't want to go back to them. I just want to start from where we stopped last time. Let me read the book of Genesis, chapter 37, verse 5 to 10. Genesis 37, 5 to 10. And I bet you know which version I'm reading. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it has to be new, it has to be English, and it has to be translation. So, <laughs> Joseph had a dream. And when he told his dream about, he told his brothers about it, they hated him even more. So, it means they've been hating him. Uh, now they hated him even more because of the dream. So I wanted to notice something. The Bible says Joseph had a dream. You will discover, and then if we go back to um, some other um, scriptures, like Genesis chapter 20, verse 3, from verse 3, Genesis chapter 20, from verse 3, the Bible says, But God appeared to Abimelech in a dream at night and said to him. But Genesis 37, 5 said, Joseph had a dream. So we do, we are in a situation right now where the subject, just let, let's speak grammatically. The subject, subjects are changing here. In the 
Genesis 20, it, God is the subject. God is the one making the action. God appeared in the dream to Abimelech. But here in uh, Genesis 37, Joseph is the subject, but something is happening to him. But uh, they're putting him as a subject. Is Joseph had a dream. So it's like he's, he's, he's making the action of the dream, but we all know he's not making a dream, but a dream is happening to him. But the thing is here, in the first sentence, it's God was coming into a place called dream or into a state of the person, into this dimension called dream. God is appearing to him in the dream. It means God can appear to him, to you, different ways. But here God is appearing to you in the dream. So which means you can have an appearance of God, not only physically, but also in the dream. It means sometimes you don't just dream. You have an appearance. I'm going to go to that. So which is when you look at what the Bible says about God appearing to a person, it's never going to be symbolic. God is not setting up a drama that is going to direct as, as a, uh, it, is going to put together some cast, do some casting and put them together and direct it as a director of a drama. No, God himself is coming to you. This is very important to say. Why? Because when God appears to you, it doesn't bring it doesn't bring symbols to you. It brings literal message. It speaks to you. It doesn't use parable. At the moment God appears to you in a dream, it's no longer a night's nice parable. It becomes a literal conversation with God, but in the different states. That's why when God appears in the dream, then he can talk to the person and the person can respond. God will say something and the person, remember when the Lord appeared to Solomon in the dream. And, uh, and that's in that dream where the Lord appeared to him. That's where they have the conversation about him becoming the, uh, the wise man. Okay. Here God appeared to Abimelech in the dream and he gave them instructions. He said, so and so, don't do this to Jacob, then do that. But in Genesis 37, it's Joseph having a dream. Which means, now it's something that God has set apart. It's a setup. A parable God puts together already and send it. He call it a dream. Are you confused? <laughs> Man, uh, let me go back to that uh, uh, we prayed I, I knew everything I'm going to be sharing today it's kind of very spiritual well there are different states of dreams before we go to bullet points and so on I wanted you to get it from the, 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 the scripture from the text in the first text of Genesis 20 the dream is a space is a place is the state of the person where the person can have an encounter. And God is the one who comes to that place called dream of the person and he appears to him in the dream. The dream is the place in which God come and appear to the person. But Joseph here, what happened? The Bible say, Joseph, the person, had something called dream you see that now it's no longer a state joseph is not into a place joseph is receiving a message called a dream so it means when this dream is happening joseph is really on his bed a spirit didn't move anywhere from where he is god is bringing to him a message called a dream but when Abimelech was sleeping, he, had, he was in a different state, in a different spiritual place where God came to meet him. So dreams are very different. It's not because you dream that you really think your dream, it's exactly mine. They, 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 I mean, the, 
overall, we all call it dream, but uh, different states of dream and different types of dream. We woke up in the morning, we say, I had a dream. And then I say, I had a dream. That's just a way of saying it. But we probably lived two different experiences. I had an appearance of God in my dream. And you had God's dream. God has sent you a dream. You had a dream. So let's keep on reading this. Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him even more. He said to them, listen to the, to the dream how I had. They were binding sheaves of grain in the middle of the field. Suddenly, my sheaf rose up and stood upright, and your sheaves surrendered my sheaf and bowed down to it. Then his brother asked him, do you really think you will rule over us? Have dominion over us? They hated him even more because of his dream and because of what he said. Then he had another dream and told it to his brothers. Look, he said, I had another dream. The sun, the moon, and 11 stars were bowing down to me. You see, no God is speaking. No conversation is going on with an angel. He has symbols, he has some scenes going on. He's observing what's going on. But as he's observing there, I would say there is a pre-knowledge. Nobody told him, these stars are your brothers. Nobody told him, uh, uh, um, these ships are your brothers. The only thing he says, is he sees his ship, he sees their ships, and then uh, this is mine, and this is theirs. He sees these stars and he, he knows these stars are bound to me. Are you still here? <laughs> because when you're into the dream, when God sends you a dream, it, the dream comes with knowledge. It comes with divine knowledge. There's no information. Sometimes you wake up in a dream, you know that the person I saw was Michael, per se. Even though he was not looking alike. You wake up, you say, I saw Michael, but the person you really saw in the dream was not really, really, really him. But dur during the dream, when the dream was happening, you knew that was Michael. So why? Because this is a divine knowledge set up, put together, sent to you, sealed by God, sent straight to your spirit. It's not information. It's revelation. So it comes with this own knowledge inside that you don't have through, uh, through your physical senses. It, it comes together with the knowledge. You know, sometimes you dream, you know, I'm in Paris. You've never been to Paris. But you, you just, uh, I was in the U.S. And then, how do you know you were in the U.S.? You've never been in the U.S. But during the dream, you knew you were in the U.S. And then sometimes you have a dream and I, I was in my, my friend's house. How do you know it, it was their house? I've never been there. But the way thing was going on, I knew I was in his house. And sometimes you have dreams like I saw this person and then I saw his husband coming. Uh, the person is not even married. But when that brother came, I knew he was his husband. You knew, how do you know that? So there's this special knowledge that comes with this, a dream when God sends the dream. So here you can see there's nobody. There are just symbols. No one. Just stars. No one. Just sheaves. But these symbols, behind these symbols, they are people's life. Why? Because it's a setup. Think of a, think of a movie. You know? A movie maker, think, it, it puts aside, it puts together a setup. A story, it gives different role to play. So you're going to be doing this, you're going to be doing that, you're going to be doing this. And then the whole thing is a movie, right? But the movie is not something that exists. We're making it up, right? So, but we, we're trying to embody a certain message when it's sent to people. That's exactly how that God, God does. It makes a movie. The movie it makes for you, it's not exactly what's going to happen. I mean, the message is that. 
but what you see are different cast. They are not the real people. That's when he sends to you a dream, which is very symbolic. Then you sometime I will tell, I'll talk to I'll talk about that later. Sometimes you even see animals. You see everything in the nature except a human being. You see everything in the nature except a human being. You see everything. Sometimes you even see houses, even you things made by humans, but you don't see the real people. You see everything except your real situation. You see yourself in a car, driving a car, and so on, but it's not even talking about a car. Why? Because it's a setup. And in this case, the Lord is not appearing to you in your dream. The Lord is giving you the dream. If I speak it correctly, dramatically, grammatically speaking, the Lord is sending the dream. But what the Bible is saying is you are having the dream, a dream. Okay? Am I confusing you? A little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's you, when you have a dream, what you call a dream, as a video maker plan, it's is the movie he set aside. He says, well, uh, I want uh, to make a movie that will talk about Tom and Jerry. <laughs> okay? That's a setup. Okay? Um, and then he says to you, the setup. It doesn't mean the real Jerry exists or the real Tom exists. Except if you don't know how to explain that in your hotel and then you don't know how to say a mouse or a cart. That's funny thing that happens. Uh, this guy didn't know how to, I mean, actually articulate that in English and then he called the, um, the room service and then he, he, actually he called the decks, the front desk. He said, well, uh, do you know Tom and Jerry? Yeah, I think uh, Jerry's here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, they, and they say, please, when you come, bring, bring Tom with you. <laughs> well, you see, that's a setup. Now, God, who made that setup, this whole story of Tom and Jerry, send you the picture, send you the video, you watch it. Okay? So, even Tom or Jerry, they are just figures, they're just symbols. What is happening in the story is the real message. Well, you seeing poor, um, I mean, Tom being chased by Jerry or the other way around. Uh, sometimes I'm confused. But God is probably sending a message telling you, okay, that's the way Tom is sending, is, I mean, sh chasing Jerry. That's how you're having all your, uh, your fights in your life. That's how you have to escape. So the message is into what's going to happen, but not the real people. You're not even seeing your boss. You're not. You're seeing nobody. But everything you're seeing is just a setup. You will see everything. So, I mean, except sorry. Now I'm. That was a French English. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna see everything except the real human being, because the, uh, this is a, a parable. It's a night parable. God is giving you a parable, but uh, it's not physical. It's happening during the night in your spirit. But the other thing I'm saying is when God appears to you in your dream. Now, I didn't make a Tom and Jerry kind of movie. I come by myself when you're sleeping. And I say, well, this is what, what I want you to, to, to do. And you see me. You see an angel. You see, I mean, me, not me. I'm, you know what I mean. <laughs> but the Lord who comes to you will be a person, will be an angel, will be a voice, will be a light. But there will be a conversation. There will be a God's presence. God will come to you. Directly, God will show up, and then you know God is coming to me. Okay, that's that's very that's very important. So, uh, let me break it down for you. <laughs> let me really break it down for you because when we dream, sometimes we don't we don't we don't know how to measure either this dream has to be taken seriously or not. We don't know how to measure if this dream has happened in my spirit or was just my soul doing its soulish thing, you know. Because even the Bible says the book of, um, uh, I mean, of the book of the preacher, <laughs> ecclesiastic. The Bible says that it's because uh, sometime because of a very long day, very busy day, that people have dream in the night. 
So the, the barber, I mean, actually recognize and accept that busyness of your day can be a cause of dream in the night. So the Bible is actually okay with a psychological, uh, not no psychological, yeah, let's say emotional type of dreams. It's happening into emotion, into your, psycho, uh, your psychology. It's happening into the man inside. It's just, uh, uh, it's just you uh, reviewing your day. That's, that's dimension. That state is real. It's not, it, there's no any message there. It's just you going back to yourself. But there's the other dimension where actually is God speaking to you. And for me, it was helping you into that. I thought I can explain to you what I call three aspects of dream. First of all, we have what you call contemplation, appearance, and transportation. If, my, if I remember very well, I think that's where we left. That was the last session. So I wanted to go deeper into this and trying to give more explanation before we open up with Q&A. So for the next session, we're going to go deeper into this. I'm going to explain to you what is a contemplation type of uh, dream, what I call symbolic and literal, where there are two types of contemplations, and then what I call the appearance type of dreams. And then uh, there are two types of appearance. That we have divine appearance and angelic appearance. And then what you call transportation type of dreams. So we're going to talk about that deeper and I'll give more examples and then you guys will probably have a chance to ask questions. God bless you and thank you for being here and I'm keep following because we're going to move on. We, I didn't want it to be long. So for now, you can play it over and over and go back to everything we said. Um, and then I hope the Lord is speaking to you because we're getting deep and deep as we go on. God bless you.